some lines from our favourite carols to help us in our prayers. So let us pray. Loving God, we miss so much being able to gather together to sing our Christmas story. But we thank you for this opportunity to sing along in the comfort and the security of our own homes. Wherever we're sitting to watch and listen to this service, may we know that you are with us. May your love and peace surround us. And even though as a church family we're all spread out, may our hearts join together to sing your praises. Lord, today we come and worship, worship Christ, the newborn King. With the herald angels, may we sing glory to the newborn King. Lord, we remember that love came down at Christmas in the form of baby Jesus. As we think of the baby in the manger with no crib for a bed, we ask that you will be near us, Lord Jesus. Whatever is going on in our lives at the moment, we ask you to stay close by us forever and love us, we pray. May we have trust and confidence in you, for we know that child so dear and gentle is our Lord in heaven above. So come. Let us adore him. 
Even though there was peace on that first Christmas night, we know that peace did not last for long. Jesus came to save us from our sins, but sin remains. With the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the angel's strain have rolled 2,000 years of wrong. So we ask your forgiveness, Lord, for our own sins, but also the sins of our fellow humans throughout the ages. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to remember your message of hope through Christmas, your love and grace and your forgiveness by your death for us, child of sorrow for our joy. Lord, may we truly know that love is shining from your face, which strikes for us now the hour of grace. So let us all with one accord sing praises to our heavenly Lord, who with his blood mankind hath bought. Thank you, God, for the message of grace at Christmas, and thank you that this is a message for all people. And to those who never listen to the message of your birth, who have winter but no Christmas, bringing them your peace on earth, we ask that they may truly know this year the joyful tidings, praise to God, the Christ has come. Bring them tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Lord, what can we give you in return for all you have done for us? What gift can we bring? All you want is for us to give our hearts. So with all that live in the little town of Bethlehem, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. And may we truly celebrate that news of great joy, news of great mirth, this Christmas time and always. Amen. The reading is taken from Luke chapter 1 verse 26 to 38, and entitled, The Birth of Jesus Foretold. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, hey. 
from Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 to 24. The birth of Jesus Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph her husband was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Oh, 
Jesus. In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn.
shepherds and the angels. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Amen.
The Visit of the Magi After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet. Out of Egypt, I have called my son. May God add his blessing to his holy word. Amen. Oh
would have thought that we would be doing a carol service in this fashion if we thought about it last year. Just think about how things have changed in this year and the many things that have happened that were so unexpected. Some of it good, most of it not so good because of COVID. But it reminds us, doesn't it, of the message of Christmas. None of what happened that first Christmas was expected. If you'd asked any of those who were scholars on the Messiah, there would not have been one who would have predicted that the Messiah would have been born a child to an unknown young mother and a carpenter father in a stable, visited by shepherds and angels and wise men. So maybe what has happened to us this year opens us up to that spirit of expectation. Don't we, in our COVID-infused world, need to hear the cry of the angels? Good news of great joy. Can we see the star that shines brightest in the darkest night? A friend of mine in the States posted this from another friend of hers recently. It speaks to the star that comes when the night is the darkest. I know some have seen the post about the Christmas star appearing this year on December 21st. I couldn't help but take really take a, a deeper look at how amazing this occurrence would be happening in the year 2020. In the year when Jesus was born, there was violence, chaos, political and social unrest. It was dark. <clears throat> the Magi found him by way of the star, which was the meeting of three stars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars. They followed the star until it rested on where he was and they began to worship him. In a time where it was dark, light was brought into our world. Jesus stepped into the chaos and brought peace. Fast forward to this year, 2020. It's a time of violence, chaos, political and social unrest. It is dark. Winter solstice, December 21st, being a time where the day is the shortest and the night is the longest. It's literally the darkest day and is the beginning of what most would say is the cold, dark winter season. And that day is tomorrow, if you're watching this on the 20th. But on the darkest day this year, Jupiter and Saturn meet, giving us the Christmas star. How fitting that in this moment of time, during the Christmas season, we get to see this beautiful reminder that even in the darkest of times, light will and has stepped in. In our chaos, God is there. In our, in our darkest time, he is there. He brings light and makes all things new. So as you look out on December the 21st for the Christmas star, may we re be reminded of his power and his light that he brings for all humankind. God is perfect at stepping into chaos and bringing peace. So I ask you this afternoon, are you having trouble this Christmas seeing the light? Can you only see the darkness, not the stars? If that is you, it's understandable that you feel that way. After what we've been through, it would be understandable if we just want to forget this year. But healing can only come when we acknowledge the pain and are willing to work through it. And that is what the Christmas message is all about. There is pain, and yet there are angels. There is no peace, and yet there are shepherds running to the stable. This pandemic is a long slog, and yet there are wise men that find a star, leave everything, and follow it. There seems to be so little hope in our world, and yet the baby came to offer us God's love. The and yet is the gift. I am sure you've heard this story before, but it illustrates the and yet of God in wonderful ways. Once upon a Christmas Eve, a man sat in a reflective, in a reflective silence before the fireplace, pondering the meaning of Christmas. There is no point to a God who becomes man, he mused. Why would any all-powerful God want to share even one of his precious moments with the likes of human beings? And even if he did, 
Why would God choose to be born in an animal stall? No way. The whole thing is absurd. I'm sure that if God really wanted to come down to earth, he would have chosen some other way. Suddenly, the man was roused from his reverie by a strange sound outside. He went to the window and saw a whole gaggle of blue geese frantically honking and aimlessly flopping about in the snow. They seemed dazed and confused. Apparently, they had dropped out in exhaustion from the flight formations of a larger flock on its way from the Arctic islands to the warmer climes of the Gulf of Mexico. Well, moved to compassion, the man tried to shoo the poor geese into his warm garage. But the more he shooed, the more they panicked. If they only realized I'm only trying to do what's best for them, he thought to himself, how can I make my, them understand my concern for their well-being? Then this thought came to him. If, for just a minute, I could become one of them, an ordinary goose, and communicate with them my concern, in their language, they would know what I'm trying to do. And suddenly, suddenly, he remembered Christmas and a smile came over his face. Suddenly, the Christmas story no longer seemed absurd. Suddenly, he pictured the ordinary looking infant lying in the manger in that stable in Bethlehem, and he knew the answers to his Christmas problem. God had become one of us to tell us that God loves us. God loves us so much that he became one of us. And yet, no matter where you stand today, close to the manger, following the star, or skeptical back on that hillside, God came to be one of us, to show us he loves us, and that nothing would be the same again. The and yet of Christmas reminds us that this gift comes when we least expect it, and sometimes when we can't even hear it. The Christmas story reminds us that we have an Alleluia shouting, speaking out, standing up, caring, sharing, community, loving, risk-taking God. And that God wants us to follow him. So let us pray. O oh God, we come in awe and amazement and wonder. We are amazed because, again, you have come to us to be one with us, to be God with us. You have come to show what it means to be truly human, what it means to resist those who desire evil in our world, what it means to stand with the poor and the oppressed. You show us that. The night is still dark, and a procession of Herods still terrorize the earth, killing the children to stay in power. The world still knows its Herods, but it also knows men and women who pack their dreams safely in their hearts and set off toward Bethlehem, faithful against all odds, undeterred by fatigue or rejection, to kneel to a child. And the world still knows those persons wise enough to follow a star, those who do not consider themselves too intelligent, too powerful, too wealthy to kneel to a child. And the world still knows those hearts so humble that they're ready to hear the word of a song and to leave what they have to go, to kneel to a child. The night is still dark, but by the light of the star, even today, we can still see to kneel to a child. And so we pray, Lord, that as you stepped into our darkness, and brought the light. We may be those people of light to others this Christmas, and we may follow your light and sing your song as we kneel to a child. In Jesus' name we pray, our Savior and the babe in a manger. Amen.
Oh, 